Changing to Polo Marine mode. And down we go! Hey, it says here that the ocean has different zones that get different amounts of sunlight. Right now, we're in the topmost zone, called the sunlit zone. Plenty of sunlight can reach this area, but the deeper we go down, the darker it gets. Below the sunlit zone is the twilight zone. Here, a little sunlight can reach. And below that, deep, deep down, is a midnight zone. Light can't reach here at all, so it's completely dark. Wow! It's getting really dark. And we're here. Uh, it's kind of spooky. I'll turn the headlights on. Whoa! What is that? A rat tail fish. It's named that because of its really long tail fin. In the deep ocean, only plants and animals that can survive extreme pressure live here. And most of them look very unusual. Ooh, like that creature. Yes, that's a type of sea slug called a nudibranch. It's cool, but I don't see Nash's dolphin. Ooh, what's that thing? What is it? Wow! Jellyfish! <gasps> and they're glowing! When a creature can make its own light, it's called bioluminescence. It's very useful when there's no sunlight around. Lucky! Dolphin! <gasps> Nash, you found it! The glow from the jellyfish helped you see where your toy landed. Oh, yeah! Way to go, Nash! All right! Got it! Nice! nice. Good, Good work, work Willow! Willow. Dolphin! Here you go, Nash! Good as new! <sighs> hey! Just a little soggy still! <laughs> of pictures. Okay, I'm done. Seagulls? Oh, this is bad. Seagulls are predators of baby sea turtles. Predators? You mean they want to eat it? But it just hatched. He's helpless. Poor turtle, poor turtle, poor turtle. Poor turtle, poor turtle. Grab it. Put it in the water ourselves. Huh? Nash says he wants us to pick it up and bring it to the sea ourselves. That's a great idea! Yay! Nash, wait! In nature, it's best to let creatures do things by themselves. We should only pick them up if there's no other way to help them. <sighs> Go away, <laughs> If we could scare them off, it could give the turtle time to get back to the water. But what are seagulls scared of? Caterpillars? Thunder? Broccoli? Aha! Uh -huh. Seagulls are afraid of hawks. So we'll make hawk sounds. They sound like... Um... Uh... I don't know about hawks, but your farm animal impressions are great, Gorby. Here's what a hawk sounds like. <laughs> Good thinking, Nash. We need to be way louder to scare them. I've got an idea! Audrey, play the hawk sound through the polar boat speakers as loud as you can. Raising volume to maximum. <laughs> ah! oh, oh, oh man, that was loud. Look, it 
it's working! One little turtle, one! One! Go, turtle, go! Go, turtle, go! Crawl, crawl! Bye-bye, turtle! Bye-bye, turtle! Bye-bye, turtle! Bye-bye, turtle! Bye-bye, turtle! Take picture, take picture, take picture. You're right, Nash. Now would be a perfect time for a picture. All right, let's take some photos. <laughs> of the sea turtle, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> that piece of wood is full of grooves. Do you think those insects made them? Like maybe they ate the wood? Let's find out what they are. They're termites. Too bad termites can't talk. They would have been close enough to see what happened to the picnic log. I don't think so. Most termites can't see. Actually, I think we're just seeing a few termites. Look, termites live in colonies. There can be more than a million termites in a colony. A million? That's a lot. Around here, the colonies are underground. But in other places, they build these. They are wow. The mounds are their nests. And at the center is the termite queen. It's her job to make sure that there are more and more termites. She is one big termite. It says that termite queens can grow to be as big as your thumb. She gets so big, she can't move around. So all of her children take care of her. So what do termites eat? Wood, right? It says here that most termites like to eat rotting wood from falling trees. That's one of the ways decomposition happens. Decomposition? What's that? That's when old rotting plants break down and return their nutrients back to the earth. So that new plants can grow. Hmm. I know what made the picnic log disappear. You figured it out? You know where the picnic log went? Yes. The amazing Lily will now amaze you by explaining the disappearing picnic log. Yay, Amazing Lily! The picnic log was a fallen tree. Right. I just never thought of it that way. And fallen trees are the kind of rotting wood that termites like to eat. The termites made the picnic log disappear. They ate it. That's decomposition. Exactly. Now the only thing that's left of our whole picnic log is that one little piece of wood. And the termites are eating that too. That is yes. amazing! Thank you! Thank you! So the disappearing picnic log isn't a magic trick after all. No, it's part of how nature works. I miss the picnic log, but I still like it here. It's nice to think that it's feeding other plants and animals so that they can live and grow. And speaking of feeding... Picnic! And now I, the amazing Lily, will perform another amazing trick. I will now make the sandwich disappear. Huh? Amazing Lily! <laughs> Martians? Uh, Marco, there is no life on Mars that we know of yet. For real? Totally. Take a look. What don't you see? Is it snacks? I love snacks! Well, nothing green, no plants, and nothing blue. So, no oceans, and also probably no snacks. All plants and animals, big or small, on land or in the oceans, need water to live. And Mars doesn't have enough. So that's why Mars isn't blue and green like Earth. It doesn't have any oceans or plants on it. So it's just all red rocks and dirt? Pretty much. Oh, <gasps> cool. So let's get down there. Buckle up, Polos. We're landing on Mars. Because the gravity on Mars is less than half of what it is on Earth. Hey, Chester, if there's no life on Mars, then what's that? Huh? <gasps> oh, Twax! Twax! Lucky! You're right, Nash. They can't be footprints. Unless whoever made them has really long feet. <gasps> Why can everyone understand Nash but me? Oh, maybe they're trails left by snakes slithering along the ground. Like this. 
know my vehicles. And these are definitely made by a vehicle. A Martian vehicle driven by a Martian creature. <gasps> but there is no life on Mars that we know of yet. No water, remember? Then what made that? Come on, Polos, let's follow the track. Yeah! Whoa! Here we go, Polos! Following the tracks! Audrey, what's that up ahead? It is the tallest volcano in the solar system, called Olympus Mons. Whoa! Olympus Mons is ginormous! Stop! Look at that! Starting here, the tracks go all over the place. Whatever made them could have gone any direction. Let's get out there and try to see which way they went. Telescope! Telescope! Oh! Wow! Okay! No, no! Huh? Zebras have black and white stripes, Nash. Of course, there's more than one species of zebra. Chester, maybe that's it. It turns out there are three different kinds of zebras. And each kind of zebra has different stripes. Take a look, Nash. Nope, long stripes. Well, there's this one. Nah. -uh. Here's the third one. The plain zebra. That looks like one we've seen around here. What do you say? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wait, what is it, Lily? We still don't know how to pick out Natchez zebra from all the other zebras around here. Yes, but it also says that every individual zebra has a unique pattern of stripes. So you can tell them apart. But we don't know what that zebra looks like. Hmm. Heel. <gasps> Nash is selfie with the zebra. We'll totally be able to see its stripes now. Audrey, could you scan for zebra herds? Scanning. Scanning. I have detected a few herds of zebra directly ahead. All go. right. Then let's go. Wow. So many zebras. And we have to find just the right set of stripes. I'm having an engineering moment. Behold, the Polo Zebra Matcher. It should be able to compare the stripe pattern of Nash's zebra to any other zebra. Yay! <laughs> Doesn't look like Nash's zebra is in this herd. Well, I guess we'll keep looking then. Let's go! It's not in this herd. Or this one. Nope, Nash's zebra isn't in this herd either. I wonder why zebras even have stripes. <gasps> when they move, their stripes make it hard to tell where one zebra starts and another one ends. So it would be hard for predators too. That must be why they have stripes. For protection. My zebra! <laughs> Scanning? Scanning? It's a match! That's Nash's zebra! I think Nash already knew that. Hello. Yeah. Scientists think their stripes also confuse bugs and keep them from being bitten. <sighs> I wish I had stripes. Okay, no swimming with giant otters because they might attack us. Let's take a look underwater. Yeah! Whee! This doesn't look so bad except for that stick. That's not a stick! It's a creature. A deadly one, too. It's an electric eel. An eel that's electric? Seriously? How is that even possible? Electric eels have special body parts that make electricity. 
They need this to help them hunt prey and defend themselves. What's that? Oh no, there's another one! That's not an eel, that's a snake, a ginormous snake. How many things live down here? Well, anacondas do, right, Chester? Yep, they're the biggest snakes in the world. They can grow to be as long as a school bus. That's big. Do they bite? No. They coil their bodies around their prey and drag them into the water to eat them. Cool. But no swimming with anacondas. Absolutely yeah. not. No. How about here? It looks beautiful. No giant otters, no electric eels, no anaconda. <gasps> Ooh, fishy, fishy. Little fishies, piranha with the sharp teeth that can eat whole animals super fast? Yes, but these red piranhas bark to warn other creatures to stay away from them. Woof, woof, woof. Cute otters that don't want to play? Eels with electricity? Giant anaconda snake that squeezed their prey? And barking piranha fish? The Amazon River doesn't seem like a good place to swim. Yeah, but this is where they live. Their home, not ours. The Amazon belongs to the creatures that live here. Sorry, Lily. Oh, I don't care about the rain. If only I could find some place to swim. If I could just find one place, any place to go swimming today. Well, how about this? I was working on the robo-umbrella, but then it started to rain and it turned into a swimming pool. Yay, thank you, Willa. Ca 